Oh yeah, he's there, he's there. I just saw him, I just saw him. Oh, that was a big fish. I'm gonna cover my basic post forming a figure eight with a prop style top water. Welcome back, we got a little change of scenery. Uh, you might notice a few things that are new in the, in the backdrop here, but let's not talk about that. Let's talk about how today I am back, kind of on my home waters, targeting extremely pressured muskies. I know most of the, the muskie fishermen out there are gonna be competing on these uh, highly pressured waters. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do I set myself apart? How do I have a better chance of catching some of these fish that are seeing, you know, 20 baits a day? So, a couple of things I'm going to do today that uh, are going to set myself apart. I'm going to throw bigger baits because I know a lot of people in the metro are, are hesitant to throw big baits. At least, you know, the casual people that are out here, maybe not super into it. We're just going to fish some shallow sand weed mix and hopefully put ourselves some musky in the net. That was a close one. That was a real close one. Well, so far, coming up shallow has paid off pretty early on in the morning. I just moved a very, very, very active fish. Pretty surprised that fish didn't eat. I mean, it was on the side of the bait, ready to go. And uh, as soon as I went into my turn, I just saw the boat and it peeled off, which is unfortunate. We are in very, very, very skinny water. I am in literally a foot of water right now. Now that's the first action I've had with this beautiful bait right here. This is called a Mark 65 flap tail by a company called Bomb Squad Baits. Now I have thrown a few different types of flap tails over the years of uh, musky fishing since they kind of took the musky world by storm. And I can say with 100% confidence that this is the most consistent flap tail that I've ever thrown. And you might be wondering what I mean by consistent. Well, they don't keep a consistent ringing. Uh, sometimes you have to twitch your rod a lot. Sometimes they just, the blade won't actually make contact with the back of the lure. But this one has a giant washer on the end, which helps with the sound. It's also got a very large blade. And the washer is actually loose. And you can hear that. That actually adds just another clicking sound. So a couple of different combinations of sounds with this bait. The other thing that's nice about it is the hook eye is lower on the body and what that actually does is it pushes the head down which exposes the back end to consistently make a ringing sound in the water as well as it pushes more water so you get a much larger wake with this lure so very easy to fish you can just straight reel it you don't have to twitch your rod or kind of get it going like a bucktail so cool cool uh, lure and uh we're gonna keep with it because that fish should have ate uh, all right well, sun's starting to come out a bit, which uh, really doesn't make me feel too good about fishing shallow with the top water. So we're gonna fish in thick weeds and uh, water is very murky on this part of the lake. So instead of throwing top water or really anything else, I'm gonna throw big blades. We got like green stained water. So I'm going with black. There's some bright sharp chews on there, but uh, I like just something black. Black is gonna contrast the most against this green stuff. So we'll see if it works. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. I just had a freaking fish off. Oh, I hate fishing this murky water. I can't see anything. Let's see if I can get him to come back up. Otherwise, I will. Oh yeah, he's there. He's there. I just saw him. I just saw him. I saw the fish in the water and I see it on, on side of me right now. This looks like a big fish. He's sticking with it too. He's still there. I got beads. It's bugging me that I can't see this thing. Okay, I think he's gone now. What the heck is that? Oh, that was a big fish. Oh my god, that was a big fish. 
Oh, why couldn't I? I saw its tail once. And that's about as clear. That's about as clear of an image as I can give you. I can't unfortunately go back to the history, but you can see he's on screen there. There's the shadow. That's the fish. Shadow, fish, shadow, fish, and then he just kind of peeled off at the end there. But that's kind of uh that looks like it was not small. I guess that's one of the the truly awesome things about side imaging is you're able to see when you have fish on your bait when you can't necessarily see that. So I saw there was a fish out behind the boat earlier on and I extended my figure eight past, you know, towards where that fish would have been on the, on the sonar. And the fish came up, uh, stuck with the bait. I mean, it, it came up on side imaging like four or five times while I was doing my figure eight, meaning that it was sticking with the boat. It was getting re-scanned by the side imaging. When I saw that mark, I looked down, I saw a tail, but uh, judging by the mark on side imaging, I would say that was a decent sized fish. Kind of a bummer that that fish didn't commit, but it is a good sign nonetheless. I mean, we're in the middle of the day, so plenty of plenty of time left today to try to try to figure something else, but drop a waypoint on the fish and hopefully come back here in a bit. Good. Oh, he's hooked so bad. Oh man, that's sorry, dude. Little fish, probably a 36 incher, hammered the cannonball junior, going to get him back in the water as soon as possible. Easy as that. That was a pretty cool eat. Again, I stressed this before by hook cutters. It just, it made that whole process so much easier. And uh, if I didn't have hook cutters, it would have been really, really bad for that fish. So nice to catch a fish. I feel bad the way that fish ate, just he got hooked in a bad spot, but sometimes there's just nothing you can do. I have another fish on side. I have two fish on side of Magina. It's probably the fish I just let go, but Gonna get back at it just in case we're in a window here. So on a previous muskie video, I was asked by Karen, how do I perform my figure eight with the top water? She says that she's getting lots of follows, but the fish just aren't committing in the figure eight. So I'm gonna cover my basic approach to performing a figure eight with a prop style top water. This is the most popular type of top water that's generally thrown for muskies. So the main thing that's really going to affect my figure eight with the top water is if I can see the fish in advance, meaning that fish is waking up on my bait out in the cast, or if it was like the fish earlier where I just kind of see the fish right at both sides. The biggest thing that I'm paying attention to with those two uh, factors, if that fish is waked up behind the bait much further out in the cast, that fish is higher. That fish is just under the surface of the water. So I am much more hesitant to stay standing up. The biggest thing that I do is I kneel down. So I get really low to the ground. And whether this makes a difference or not, this is just something that I started doing. But in my opinion, I think that really helps uh, give yourself a much lower profile to that fish. It's much higher up if I'm standing up doing big sudden movements. That fish is much more likely to see me and get spooked by something. If that fish is lower under the top of the water and it's not popping a huge wake behind the bait, then that fish is much more focused on just honing in on the lure. It's not really gonna see much above the lures. Now the next thing that you're gonna wanna worry about is speed. Now, again, if I can see this fish coming in from much further out, so let's say, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm in my retrieve right now and just now I'm seeing a fish and it's waking. So then I'm much more able to kind of play around with the speed on the way in. So sometimes I'll speed up. Speeding up is probably the biggest thing that I'll do. And generally, if you speed up a top water with a waking fish, that fish most of the time will just eat the bait out in the cast. I have had instances where I speed up and the fish actually sinks. Well, then I know if I get that fish in at an eight, it's not gonna want it to speed up. So the biggest thing though that I'm worrying about while performing a top water figure eight is just what the fish is doing. I want to read that fish's behavior 
it's a big learning curve to not get kind of uh, shell shocked by seeing the fish. Being able to just remain calm, do a nice steady L turn watching that fish and just reading its behavior. The figure eight is all about reading the muskie's behavior. If that fish is kind of turning off, then that's kind of when I'll try to do a speed up, a sharper turn, something like that. Again, there's really no concrete way that you're gonna perform a figure eight with the top water. It's all gonna depend on that fish. Easiest thing that you can try is just changing the speed of your top water. If you're to ask me, the most important thing that I'm paying attention to is just trying to keep myself calm. It can be tough, especially with the big fish, but staying calm and uh, not freezing up, not doing anything super erratic with your top water is gonna be probably the most important thing. So in summary, the biggest thing that I can stress is it's always just gonna depend on when you can see that fish coming in, whether it's out in the cast or it's boat side and just spending more time throwing top water lures, getting more comfortable with different types of top water lures. And most importantly, uh, just getting comfortable with seeing those fish come in behind your lure. There's always different factors that are gonna come into play when you're doing a figure eight, especially with the top water. Doing a figure eight with the top water is very, very tough. So don't be too hard on yourself. Get out there, do it more often, and I will see you all in a future video next week.